often when we talk about photography, we talk about the photographers of the past, you know, the people who came before us. And, and of course, that's a completely one-sided view of the history of photography. How's it, how's it? Yeah, often, you know, we talk about the great photographers of the past, and we've got a strokey beard about them, and we kind of overlook the photographers of today, the ones who are still writing their stories, who are raw around the edges occasionally, but, you know, but who are creating challenging, exciting, and, and extremely creative photography. Discovering new photographers is a uniquely personal thing. So rather than me telling you why I think all these photographers are worth your time, I'd like you to draw your own conclusions. Think about why a particular photographer resonates with you or why they just kind of leave you just feeling meh. First up is Wami Oluko, who's from Nigeria, although she studied philosophy at the University of Edinburgh. And her photography, I think, is, is, is wonderfully exciting because it brings in... See, see what I'm doing there? Already I'm telling you why I think her photography is great. But just look at it. I, I love the aesthetic and hopefully you will too. Do you get this feeling of story, of, of narrative, when looking at these photographs, even though they have more of a fashion flavor to them? Next up is Chiska Fortune Smith. I'm sorry if I ever mispronounce some of these names. I'm not very good with, with names. I'm terrible. I'm terrible at that. You'd think I'd get better. But anyway, so she was born in Baltimore and studied Japanese art history at the University of Maryland. And when I look at her photographs, and, and I hope you see this too, I see such a, a, a wide ranging series of influences that it's very hard to pin down her actual style of photography. I did talk in a previous video about having a style in your photography and how it's not necessarily a required thing. But if you look at her images, we can see so many different rich sources of inspiration. And I wonder if if you look outside your own little box, it's just a little bit that you be, be, might be able to draw in inspiration from places that you hadn't really considered. Of course, when we look at younger photographers, we see how they see the world, the, the lens and the filters through which they pass, how they interpret the things and the events going on around them. And we live in very momentous times. Regular viewers of the channel will know that I am an absolute sucker for architectural photography. I wanted to be an architect before I became a photographer because my leap math skills were just, um, yeah, not up to, <laughs> not up to scratch. So it was wonderful to see the photography of Agnes Clotis. And, and again, my French pronunciations are just awful. So, so please bear with me. But you know, her photographs of these architectural 
elements, these large brooding buildings, but then are somehow reduced to a wonderful quietness. I often wonder what it is about photographs of large buildings, large architecture, large infrastructure that I find quite still, quite quiet actually, given that they are surrounded most of the time by extremely noisy life. Do you get the same feeling? Technical proficiency is one aspect of photography, but the, I think the most important aspect is being able to communicate effectively with your photographs. All of these images move me in a certain way because their, their creator has understood the language of photography. And I would like to help you develop your own voice. And I've, so to do that, I put together a course that will teach you the basics of the language of communicating visually. I'd love for you to join other hundreds of students who have taken this step already in improving their photography and making their images stand out from the crowd. The course is on discount from now until the end of February. There is a description link below. Just click on that and that will take you and show you all the other info. Dario Sulakuri is a Georgian-based photojournalist who creates photographs of a, a lifestyle that I think is sort of passing I don't know, maybe passing away. And he's showing us how what was considered to be traditional, like, you know, brides being married very young and all these sort of things, and, and making uh, his own observations about these traditions. And then, of course, shoehorning that with the political events of what's going on in that region. Something that you see probably through a lot of these photographers' work is that it is not technically polished. It can be quite rough around the edges. And of course, that's the beauty of it, is that we are seeing these photographers in the raw. They're not necessarily the greats of tomorrow, but they are photographers who have the, the, the potential to be great. Another photographer on the other side of the world who is also looking at the events going on around them and documenting them in their own unique way is Ian Thomas Janssen Longquist. Again, he was photographing events that would affect him and shape his life in his own unique way.
One of the things that I love about younger photojournalists is that they are very much photographing for themselves. They are not necessarily thinking too much about the wider audience and, and you know, and having to, to uh, uh, I say, please, you know, picture editors or, you know, you know the sort of thing I mean, right? That their audience is really themselves and their contemporaries. And this lends their images a, a certain naive, a naive look that feels a little bit more real. Going back a little bit closer to my home now and exquisite portraits of cattle. Yep, <laughs> it's portraits of cattle, but they are absolutely beautiful. And Daniel Nordir's photographs of the Causa cattle of the Eastern Cape in South Africa are wonderful. These are great examples of how when you photograph a subject in a way that is not necessarily recognized. You know, if somebody said to you, let's photograph some, some cows, I, I don't, how many hands up, how many people would think to make them look noble, to make them look this, this proud portrait of, of, a, of these, these magnificent looking heads of cattle. It's wonderful to look at photographers like these who have this great potential because they can inspire us to also pursue our own avenues of creativity. If you are looking for other places to find inspiration from, now I did a video recently, which I put up on the screen here, and I'll link to it in the description box below, that talks about just that. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.